Hey church family, welcome to our midweek service. We're going online again until further notice. Uh, but in the meantime, listen, I just want you guys to know that myself, Pastor Kathy, and the leadership and church members are praying. We're praying for the situation. We're praying for what's going on in this world. We're praying for you specifically. If there's anything that we can do, if there's any way that we can help you or your family, please reach out to us. Let us know. We'd love to be there for you. Um, we're continuing to get our messages out uh, through YouTube, through Facebook, through Instagram. You can go online at www.hdchurchdelano.org and see everything that's going on. I know that this will pass. We're believing it. So I pray that you stay strong in your faith, planted in God's word. As we get into the word tonight, I pray that you come prepared and ready to receive. The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership by John Maxwell. We're in chapter 11, the law of the inner circle. A leader's potential is determined by those closest to him. The scripture in Proverbs chapter 12, 26 says this. It says, the righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. So as we begin in page 127, if you have your book with you, and you want to turn there, I'll begin to read. It says this. It says, when we see any incredibly gifted person, it's always tempting to believe that talent alone made him successful. To think that is to buy into a lie. Nobody does anything great alone. Leaders do not succeed alone. A leader's potential is determined by those closest to him. What makes the difference is the leader's inner circle. So right now, as, as we start, I want you to begin to think to yourself. I want you to begin to think about your inner circle right now. And I want you to think, who's in it? Who are you allowing into your life, into your space, into your family? Who are you allowing to speak into your life? Who are you allowing to influence you? Begin to think of your own inner circle right now because the truth is we all have um, a handful of people that we really look to, that we really go to, that we really think about when something goes wrong, we, we, we call them or we text them and we ask them for their thoughts or their opinion. And when something goes right, we're excited to call them and tell them about it. Maybe it's a promotion at work. Maybe it's something that happened, something exciting happened with our kids at school, an award or some sort of accomplishment. We all have an inner circle. So right now for the next 30 seconds, I want you to think about who's in your inner circle. And I want you to think if those that you've allowed to be a part of your life on this journey, I want you to think if those people are help building and help pushing and growing you. I want you to be honest and think if some of those people are breaking you down and pulling you away and not helping you grow specifically for us in the faith towards who God is calling us to be. So I have three questions for you, three points for you as always. And the first one is this, what does your inner circle look like? I think this is a time where we can just evaluate and think a little bit about who we allow inside of our lives, with our families, who we allow to speak into our lives. The scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33 says this. It says, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. And I think if you're a parent or as parents, I think one of the things that we think about the most when our kids are growing up is who they are surrounding themselves with. Because we understand the power of, of influence. We understand that if our kids are surrounding themselves with, uh, with kids or people that are not good for them, we know that when you're growing up, you're just, you're, you're easily influenced. And if you're building relationships as a kid or growing up as a preteen or teenager, you, you are attracted to people that you have things in common with. And you know what? Even as adults, we're attracted to people that we have things in common with. We have to search a little bit deeper. We have to look a little bit further than just, think, just commonalities. We just have to look further than that. 
And I think as parents, we see that with our kids, that we, we want them to surround themselves with good people. Even, you know, even for me as a, as a, as a pastor, you know, being in church and ministry for as long as I have and serving on staff here at the church for almost 12 years now, it's been, a, it's been difficult to transition from just different relationships. And sometimes because I had to, I had no choice. And other times because people just decided to move on. But, but like for myself, I've, I've lost, I've gained, I've recognized I've transitioned. I've even outgrew certain relationships and friendships in my life. And it hasn't been difficult. There's been specific times that I could recall where I've had really close friends of mine, you know, be a part of the church and serving in ministry with me. And, and they decided to go a, a, a different route. And, and it was painful and it was difficult. But, but I knew for myself personally that I could not allow their decisions and their choices to affect me or mine. I knew that I still, you know, I wanted to serve God if there was those that maybe decided they didn't want to continue to follow Christ the way I was following Christ or at all. I knew that I could not allow that to affect my life. And so I think when it comes to, you know, figuring out what your inner circle looks like, I think you have to be prepared. I think one of the things that I think about is that you have to have tough skin and a tender heart. You have to understand that, especially in the faith walk, that things are going to be up and down. People are going to come and go. I remember there was a, a couple friends of mine that decided they weren't going to come to uh, church here anymore. And for whatever reason, they decided they wanted to, to move on. And I remember they asked me to come over and they told me they weren't going to be a part of the church anymore. And I remember just feeling so upset and hurt because I felt like I poured so much in to them that I felt like I didn't deserve that. But that was probably one of the greatest moments for me that built more character in my life than a lot of other times in my life was being able to continue to move forward and being cordial, not holding a grudge, but loving and still caring for them as people and not allowing that situation to, to put a rift between uh, me and God and me and them. I know for me, when it comes to looking at my inner circle, I'm very careful about it. I'm very careful about who I allow in and who I allow into my life and into my family because, listen, when it comes to your inner circle, you need to look for healthy relationships where trust is constantly being cultivated and intimacy is the norm. You need to, you need to be looking and making sure that the relationships in your inner circle are healthy and that you trust the people that you're allowing to be a part of your life and that there's intimacy, that you can talk and be real and have conversations with one another and just love on each other the way God has called us to love each other. So that is my question for you. What does your inner circle look like? Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. And understand, people are going to come and go. Keep your focus on Jesus. God, God will always be able to bring, you know, new friends, good people to you, but constantly examine your inner circle for your life. And the second question that I want you to ask yourself is this, is that do they add value to you? Does the relationships from your inner circle add value to you? I want to read a portion of uh, the book to you on page 131. And it says this, it says, who are you drawing into your inner circle? It says, most people create an inner circle of people. However, they are usually not strategic in doing so. We, are, we naturally tend to surround ourselves with either people we like or people with whom we are comfortable. Few people give enough thought to how those closest to them impact their effectiveness or leadership potential. You see it all the time with certain athletes who transition to the professional ranks and entertainers who achieve success professionally, some self-destruct and never reach their potential. And it can often be attributed to the kind of people they spend their time with. To practice the law of the inner circle, you must be intentional in your relationship building. You must give thought to the accomplishment of your mission and the success of the people who follow you. 
Only if you reach your potential as a leader do your people have a chance to reach their potential as you consider whether individuals should be in your inner circle, ask yourself the following questions. If you can answer yes to these questions, then they are excellent candidates for your inner circle. So the second question was this, do they add value to you? And the scripture in Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 says this, it says, whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. I think one of the hardest things that we have to do as believers is really look and recognize if those that we still allow in our inner circle are adding value to us. I, I know for me, I think um, throughout the years, it's been difficult transitioning from different friendships and relationships, and it's been hard. I, I can't say it's easy, church, because some of the closest people to you in your inner circle are your family and friends that you've had for a really long time. And I know for myself over the years, I've had to draw myself to others and pull myself away from those that are not adding value to my life. And it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing when you're transitioning from relationships that you know are going to are going to make you stronger, that you know are going to add value to you and your family. It's not a wrong thing either. And I think what we do is, is we, we, we mix up the word loyalty in, in this conversation right here. And we feel like that we have to be loyal to certain people because we've known them for so long. But let me just say something. When you come to know Jesus and you come to know Christ and you really begin to follow him, those relationships, they, you can still maintain a relationship with them, but they don't have to be your inner circle where they're constantly speaking into your life, especially, listen, especially if they're not adding value, and if they're not adding value, then they might be adding something negative to you. They might be pulling you or drawing away from becoming more of who God wants you to become. They might be uh, pulling away from the potential that you have to go out and do something great or, 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 or finish school or get that promotion or get that. They might be just speaking negative into your life, even in the situation that we're in right now in this world, you might have people in your inner circle that are just constantly pumping fear into your life, constantly calling you or texting you and just talking about all the negativity that's going on, that they can't see any good in what's going on. Those are the types of relationships that I'm talking about right now that we don't need in our lives. And so the question is, do they add value to you? Because the scripture says that whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. So you always got to ask yourself when it comes to these types of relationships is that, for example, like do, do they spend quality time with you? Do they speak good into your life? Are they helping you grow and are they encouraging you to be more like Jesus or are they just speaking negative things into your life? Or do you feel like there's a certain level of loyalty that is expected from you? Or look, there's even this misconception, okay? And you have to be very careful here. There's a misconception when it comes to friendships and relationships and it's all, it's all gonna be about your faith and how strong you are when it comes to the things of God. There's a misconception that says that I need to maintain this friendship or relationship with them so I can draw them closer to God. And that's neither wrong nor is it right. You're going to have to figure that out for yourself because if you're just saying that I just want to be around these people because I feel like I can draw them close to God. But if you're just saying that and you don't really need it and you know that the relationships that I'm talking about, you know that those are having a negative impact on your life, then you need to reevaluate that statement. And you need, to, you need to make sure that you're just, not you're just not maintaining relationships for the sake of maintaining relationships and friendships. And you're not just using the God card as an excuse to keep hanging out with those people that you want to hang out with and go to the places that you probably know you shouldn't be going to and doing the things that you shouldn't be doing by, by saying, well, I know I'm going to lead them to Christ that way. That's not going to work with you and that's not going to work with God. You have to be absolutely sure that you're continuing in those relationships because you know you're planting seeds of hope 
and love and encouragement. And you, you, you know that you're drawing them closer to God and you know that they're not drawing you more away from God. Because that's exactly what the enemy wants to do. He wants you to think that, oh yeah, yeah, keep on hanging out, keep on talking, keep on going out, keep on remaining friends with them. Yeah, 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 keep doing that because you're going to draw them closer. But, but look, examine it for yourself. If things haven't changed in so long and, and they're still pulling on you in a negative way, that's what I'm talking about. Are they adding value to you? Because if they're not, some tough, difficult decisions have to be made when it comes to to changing and even removing people from your inner circle. You can still maintain a relationship with them, but it doesn't mean you have to maintain a partnership with them where they're close to you, where they're, where they're drawing and pulling on you and influencing you in ways that you know that they shouldn't be influencing you. So quality time, speaking good into your life, helping you grow and encouraging you to be more like Jesus Christ, you got to ask yourself that question. Do they add value to me? And the third one is, is this. Do you add value to them? And I think we can all look at our inner circle and see who adds value to us, but I think if we really, really do a, a self-examination of ourselves, we got to ask ourselves that question, church, is do you add value to the relationships in your inner circle? And if so, how? How do you add value to those that are closest to you? The scripture in Proverbs chapter 17, 17 says this. It says, a friend loves you all the time and a brother helps in time of trouble. I think one of the things that I think about as a parent, because your inner circle if you're married and you have children, your, your first inner circle is your spouse and your children. And for the most part, when you talk to your children about things, they believe you because you're their dad or you're their mom. That's, that's just the way it is. That's just the way God designed it. Your kids just naturally have a love for you that's unexplainable. And when you love your children and, and you, you look out for them and you help them, discipline them and you raise them um, that love grows further that trust grows even deeper and I remember when my wife and I first got married and uh, Cameron wanted a, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and it was this it was just this 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 rotating cycle of every time Cameron needed something just would jump up and go do it for her and there was a point in, in our in our marriage where I just said hey look you you gotta stop doing that because she's not a, a, a little baby anymore. She's a small child. And so uh, as a parent, you have to recognize when you need to transition from enabling your children and you got to start building a bridge to empowering them and showing them that they can do things on their own. And so there was a moment where Cameron wanted a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And I remember Jessica jumped up to go make it. And I said, you know what? Just don't stop, please. Just sit down for a second. I said, come here, Cameron. And we got up and I popped her on the counter and I pulled the bread out and I pulled the peanut butter and I pulled the jelly out and I showed her where the butter knives were and I opened up the peanut butter. I said, look, I pulled out two pieces of bread and I said, look, I'm going to show you how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Pulled out the bread, started putting the peanut butter on, got some jelly out, put the jelly on, showed her how to make it, fold it, even cut it in half if she wanted to. And I said, look, do you see how I did all that? Okay, now look, let's put everything away. Put the lids back on, put everything back where it went, put the bread away. And I said, that's how you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So I want you to know that you can do this for yourself from now on. And I think it's in those moments right there that we realize as, as good friends, as, as people that want to add value to those that are inner circle, that we learn how to empower one another. And the same way that we did with, with Cameron is the same way that we would do with each other. And it's really cool to see now, it's really cool to see how, how independent and responsible she is at 11 years old from, from building, from enabling to building that bridge, to empowering, and to see her do things on her own, to see her become, uh, in essence, her own person, to see her become more responsible. But like, 
This would have never happened if we would have never taught her and if we would have never empowered her for her to see for herself that she could do these things on her own. So my question to you is that what kind of value do you add to your inner circle? Are you the type of friend that is always enabling those that are closest to you because you don't want to hurt them or offend them? Are you the one that just agrees with, with all the negative talk that comes out of their mouth? Or, or are you the type of friend that is empowering them and helping them and helping them grow and encouraging them and challenging them and holding them accountable and holding them to a higher standard as a leader? This is the type of friend that you're going to want in your inner circle. And this is the type of friend that you need to be to those that are in your inner circle. A friend that loves, a friend that cares, a friend that can empower and help build the life of those that are closest to you. So church, my encouragement for you tonight is this. Never stop growing your inner circle. Some of you, you need to go and truly evaluate those that are closest to you. And I'm not saying that you got to go and text and call everybody and say, hey, I can't be your friend no more because Pastor Eric told me that I can't be your friend because you have a negative impact on my life and you're pulling me away from the things of God and I got to draw myself away from you. No, I'm not saying do that. What I am saying is that you need to take a look at those that are closest to you and you need to really ask yourself, am I allowing people into my life that are not adding value. And if they're not adding value, are they hurting me or affecting me in a negative way? Are they pulling me away specifically? Listen, specifically from my relationship with Jesus Christ. Or are they helping build my faith? Are they strengthening me? Are they encouraging me? Are they lifting me up? Like even in this time, like right now in the time that we're living in, is your inner circle a group of people that are speaking hope speaking faith and, 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 and constantly encouraging and loving and looking for the good and all the wrong that's going on in this world right now. Are, are, is that the type of people that you're around? Or is it the opposite? Because the reason that we need people in our lives is because there are no leaders that are lone rangers. And that's what the book talks about if you want to go back and read it. There are no lone ranger leaders. Every leader has people that are following them. And every leader has different people in their inner circle. And I don't know about you, but I desire to be a really good leader, especially in the time that we're living in now. I desire to be a good leader to those that I come in contact with daily or weekly. I desire to be, remember what we talked about on Sunday, check in with God, check in with yourself, and listen, check in with each other. I desire to be that type of good leader, especially in the time that we're living in now. And I'm going to close with a quote. You can do what I cannot do, and I can do what you cannot do, and together we can do great things from Mother Teresa. So I encourage you, church, examine your inner circle. Examine who are you, who are you drawing in to your inner circle. Examine if those that are closest to you are adding value to your inner circle or to you yourself. Examine if you're adding value to those that you are around and that you're speaking to and having a relationship with. And I'm telling you right now, some choices are very difficult and tough. I think a lot of us know that there's some people in our lives that we probably need to distance ourselves from and, and my advice to you is to pray, to ask God for the wisdom on how to do that. And really, really just in, in, in the most loving and genuine way, figure out how you can still remain in relationship with them, but not allow them to pull you away from what God or who God wants you to be. That is my encouragement to you. I pray that you receive something. I pray that you're growing we're going to continue on 
We're still having our midweek services, even if they're online. We're going to continue to move forward. We love you, church, and we'll see you soon. Amen, church. I hope you received that word tonight, and I pray that it goes deep inside your heart and that we continue to move forward and just grow to become better leaders, leaders that God is calling us to be. Tonight, uh, we don't want to stop. We want to continue to push forward. I wanted to give you a little bit of information about what we're doing here at HD Church. We are going to uh, start building food care packages. So we're going to be creating boxes of food. And so we're asking for your help. PJ's Pantry has been um, giving out food throughout the week, just at different times. I don't really have any times for you that have been asking, but just different times um, we've been able to bless and give to people. Look, even before um, all of this that has happened in the world, we still were giving out food to those in need. And so we still want to be a part of that. Now more than ever, we want to start building these um, food care packages. And so I'm asking for your help. We're asking for your help. If you're able to, to purchase, if you're in the position where you can purchase, you know the scripture in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27 says this. It says, out of the message, it says, never walk away from someone who deserves help or never walk away from someone who needs help. But I love this part right here. It says, your hand is God's hand for that person. Don't tell your neighbor, maybe some other time or try me tomorrow when the money's right there in your pocket. So as we receive tonight's tithes and offerings, I want you to think about this. As you're giving and sowing in to this house and your church, I want you to think about how you can help as we begin to build these care packages. Maybe uh, you'll find yourself at the store. I want you to think maybe you can pick up some ramen, some canned goods, some, some dried goods, whatever it is that you can pick up, bring it to the church and we'll be uh, building these and giving these out as we can. And just continuing to love um, our community, show them the love of God and show them that we care. Even in, even in a difficult time, we still wanna do our part and help. So I'm praying that you sow into tonight and there's five ways you can give. It'll be on the screen. I want you to look at those five ways. See uh, the best way that you can give. And I uh, just want you to know we love you guys. I appreciate your constant and continual support. Uh, I know we're going to be back soon. I miss you guys. I want you to know that. I miss you guys. I missed seeing everybody on Sunday. I'm going to miss seeing everybody um, at the midweek. And I'm just praying that we can begin to gather soon. That's my prayer. In Jesus' name, we love you. Be blessed. Hey, HD Church family. Would you do me a favor? Let's just pray over today's message and today's offering. Father God, we just thank you and we come to you once again. First and foremost, we just praise you and give you the glory for loving us, for pouring your grace and mercy upon us, God. We just come to you again, Lord, and we just lift up this world, our nation, Father, our states, our cities to you, Father, your people, God. And we just ask that you continue to heal our land, Father, we're continuing to put our trust in you, our faith in you, Lord. And we just thank you for that. And I just thank you for everyone that is continuing to support HD Church, to believe in the mission and the vision and the purpose. Father, I just thank you that, that their seed is going into good ground. And I pray right now, Father, that you begin to work. You begin to work in their lives, Father. I'm praying for a, a hundredfold return on their lives internally and externally. God, continue to bless us, give us opportunities, open new doors for us, God. Give us increase in our lives right now. And I just thank you, Lord, and I praise you for all that you're doing in our lives. We're continuing, Lord, to trust in you like your word says. In Jesus' name, amen.